Hi, I'm Ms. Hearn. Let's get started. In this video, we're going to talk about De Morgan's Laws for Sets and how to show that they're true. So what De Morgan's Laws for Sets say are, first of all, that if you consider the set A union B and its complement, that's the same as taking the complement of A and intersecting it with the complement of B. And similarly, if you start with the intersection of A and B and take its complement, that's the same as taking the complement of A and the complement of B and finding their union. So in this video, we're going to um, analyze this using a Venn diagram. Here I have a Venn diagram of two sets, A and B, and you can see that I have Roman numerals there that represent the regions. So set A is going to consist of region one and region two, and set B consists of region two and region three. And outside of sets A and B in the universal set, but not in A and B is region four. So we have four regions under consideration. And so what we're going to do is kind of pretend that those region labels are elements of the given set. For example, I'm going to pretend that A is the set containing two elements, Roman numeral one and Roman numeral two. And B is the set containing the two elements Roman numeral two and Roman numeral three. And U, the universal set, contains all of the regions. So it has Roman numeral one, Roman numeral two, Roman numeral three, and Roman numeral four. And what I'm going to set out to do is to use these sets to demonstrate that De Morgan's laws are true. So let's start with the proposition that the complement of A union B is equal to the intersection of the complements of A and B. How can we establish that that's true? Well, we need to figure out what A union B complement looks like in the Venn diagram, which regions that it constitutes, and figure out what A complement intersect B complement looks like and see that they're actually the same. So the way that I'm gonna do that is I'm going to start with A union B complement. I'm going to rewrite it by replacing A with what it's equal to, which is region one and region two, and replacing B with what it's equal to, which is region two and region three. Copying down the parentheses, the union and the complement just as they were before. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work inside the parentheses first. Just like in algebra, in set operations, we work inside the parentheses first. And remember that union means that you unite the two sets into one big set. Anything that's in one set or the other has to be included in the union. That means that we have one big set that contains one and two, and so we've covered those, and it also we've already covered that two, but we also need to have a three in there. So the union is putting them together into one big set. And then this little symbol out here, that's the complement that says what's not in the set. Something in the universal set that is not in regions one, two, or three. Well, in other words, if you take out of the universal set one, two, and three, what's left is just region four. So the complement of the set containing one, two, and three is four. If I were to draw a picture of this, A union B complement could be depicted as shown here. Now let's figure out what A complement intersect B complement looks like. So once again, I'm going to replace A with what it's equal to, regions one and two. And remember, we still have to copy down that complement symbol and the intersection symbol. And then we're gonna replace B with what it's equal to, which is regions two and three. 
and copy down that complement symbol. Okay, so now we have to do the complements before we can do the intersection. Again, it's a kind of order of operations for set. First, you work inside any parentheses, then complements of individual sets, and then unions and intersections from left to right. So here we have two places where we have the complement of an individual set. Here we have the complement of the set containing one and two. Here we have the complement of the set containing two and three. Let's start with the complement of the set containing one and two. That means everything that's in the universal set but not in one and two. So we're gonna take out one and two, and what's left in the universal set is just three and four. As for the complement of the set containing two and three, what's not in the set containing two and three, but still in the universal set, would be one and four. Next, we have to find the intersection of these two sets. Intersection means the overlap. In other words, the elements they have in common. The only thing in common between these two sets is region four. So you can see that we got the same result when we found A union B complement, when we found the complement of A union B, as we did when we found A complement intersect B complement. So we've proven the first of De Morgan's laws. Now let's look at the second. On the left side, we have the complement of A intersect B. A contains regions one and two, and B contains regions two and three. So their intersection or overlap would be region two. We want the complement of that though, which is everything not in region two. So that's regions one, three, and four. Similarly, on the right, we have A complement union B complement. A is the set containing one and two, so its complement contains three and four. B contains two and three, so its complement contains one and four. If you find the union of those two sets, you get the set containing one, three, and four again. So A intersect B complement is equal to A complement union B complement, and they both can be represented in the Venn diagram by shading all the regions except region two. So we've proven the second part of De Morgan's Laws. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. That will help other students to find the video.